So, we now know that sound is essentially a series of vibrations that are a result of changes in air pressure and that there are alternate rarefactions and compressions that constitute this. Now, when we hear something, these sound waves are collected by our pinna. The pinna serves as a funnel which not only collects these waves but filters and amplifies them a little bit. The sound waves then enter the auditory canal. It passes through the canal where it hits the tympanic membrane or eardrum. The sound waves cause the tympanic membrane to vibrate, with the compressions pushing the membrane in and rarefactions pulling it out. As you can see here, sound energy is converted to mechanical energy, the form in which it will be transmitted through the rest of the ear. Now, the tympanic membrane is attached to the head of the malleus and its vibration is in turn transmitted to the head of the malleus. Movement of the head of the malleus is transferred to the rest of the ossicular chain. The movement of this chain within the tympanic cavity amplifies the energy transmitted. How is that? Well, firstly, the eardrum has a much larger surface area than the foot of the stapes, even though the same amount of energy is being transferred. With more energy applied over a smaller surface area, there is greater force. Similarly, the malleus acts as a lever to amplify the force with which the ossicular chain vibrates. And it needs to be amplified because the rest of the ear is fluid filled, air in the middle ear and liquid in the inner ear. Wave propagation in these mediums would involve overcoming resistance and so amplification goes a long way in overcoming that. Okay, moving on. If you remember, the foot of the stapes covers the oval window which is the connection with the perilymph-filled vestibule. The rocking motion of the stapes over the oval window causes pressure waves in the perilymph fluid. This gets transmitted to the cochlea through the scala vestibule. The fluid moves up the spirals to the helicotrema where it moves into the scala tympani and descends to reach the round window. The round window then moves in the opposite direction of the oval window. So, if the oval window is pushed inwards at a given moment, the round window is pushed outwards. The pressure waves in the perilymph causes movement of the basilar membrane because of the way in which the basilar membrane is designed. The waves causes the greatest movement in the portion of the basilar membrane meant for its specific frequency. The basal portions of the membrane are more responsive to higher pitches and the epical portions are more responsive to lower pitches. The point of maximum amplitude of movement helps us determine pitch. Now, as the basilar membrane is displaced, the organ of corti also moves up and down. The tectorial membrane is attached by a hinge-like mechanism and as a result, it also moves up and down. The opposing shearing forces of movement of the basilar membrane and the tectonic membrane makes the membrane rub the hair cells in an opposing direction. This bends the stereocilia and causes opening of certain ion channels. There is once again a change in potential difference and a generation of action potential. This potential then travels through the branches of the vestibulocochlear nerve that innervates that hair cell. This nerve passes into the auditory cortex where the signals are decoded into sound.